I'm just having to come to terms with right now in this moment that disorientated is proper British English. I really thought I knew a thing or two. Let's move on. Today we are talking about Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton. I had the great pleasure of listening to this on audiobook. First of all, I've never heard of this book in my life. <laughs> Absolutely never heard of it. Then I was scrolling on my library app on Libby and it was in a jump, it was in a skip the line list. And I don't even know what skip the line means. Like, does that mean they bought a new copy and they're letting you, I don't know what it means. Point is, you get the book right away. So I got the audiobook and I was thinking, just because I simply listen to audiobooks rather than read real books. Um, and I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be great if Tom Felton was actually reading this book? And it is, oh, it is so great when authors like do their own audiobooks. I, I love it. It's like they're talking to you. Like, I just felt it was so great. Downside was I had to listen to it a little bit slower because I love Tom Felton's voice so much. I didn't want it to be like distorted. <laughs> so I started listening to it and I was like, so I had to slow it down a little bit. And I listened on 1.5, which is still a little bit faster. The only thing that was a little bit like grating on me was he like chuckles a lot in this, which is good, great. It's, you know, it's like his story and it's like he's talking to you. However, when you listen to it at all faster, stuff like that doesn't translate. It's just like some books have a little bit of music at the beginning and end. And if it's any bit faster than 1.0, it sounds very weird. His chuckling sounded weird. <laughs> but as it was at 1.5, the spaces between chapters and even sentences was pretty long. And I know that's like, it's not a big deal. But sometimes I, I, every time that the end of a chapter came, I thought I had accidentally paused it. But it was really good otherwise. He did a great job of reading it. This came out last year, almost exactly a year ago. A year ago, two days ago. This was not just about Harry Potter. This was about his whole life. It was mostly, I'd say, starting right before he started acting and then ending a couple of years after Harry Potter ended. And it jumped around a lot. It was mostly his life, but it did jump around a lot. Um, but so it was kind of like natural storytelling. Um, and I liked that about it a lot. I've only read a couple of memoirs in my life and they were always kind of hard hitting. <laughs> I've read Educated, Everything Sad is Untrue, and In Order to Live. So those are some pretty hard hitting ones. Uh, <laughs> And this I thought would be like a big change from that because he's just like literally a celebrity, but it was really great. Um, I liked the, like it kind of had a full circle-ness about it, which was really satisfying. And, and the ending was pretty around like, I don't know, it was very close to the end, probably around 80 or more percent. It took a turn. <laughs> And it was unexpected to say the least. And that may be because I know nothing about, like I don't keep up with celebrities, uh, but it was unexpected for me and I really liked it a lot. Um, and then of course the afterword had me in tears. Okay. But I felt that as somebody who, I'll say this, I've always loved Harry Potter, this, this, the books, and I, you know, it's one of the first books I ever read, and I've always really liked the movies too. As I get older, I get a little bit more, like, I'm a little bit more frustrated with the movies, um, but they are still one of the greatest, like, series of all time, in my opinion, and so it's played a huge part in my life. One thing that was kind of, that stood out to me about these books was that, um, it was so obvious when he was writing this or it was so obvious about when hearing about his experience going through Harry Potter was that he was like definitely not a main character um and I didn't really feel like growing up like I always thought that Draco was like the fourth 
main character, which is not true at all. But I just felt like, yeah, he's the fourth main character. You know, before Voldemort came back, he was like the villain. I mean, even though Voldemort was like always, always the villain, he was the villain in, in one and two specifically. And so I just, I just didn't, I, I always thought that he was a main character. And I always thought he was like just as big as them. You know, he got to be touring as much and going to whatever as much as them. But he made it very clear in these books, like he was on a totally different track than them. He was only there every other week. He went to regular school uh, when he wasn't in. And like his life was like fairly normal. People didn't recognize him that often. He got made fun of in school for being a part of Harry Potter and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so he had a totally different experience than they did. And he was very humble about it. And I loved the way that he spoke about his um, co-stars. It was amazing. <laughs> he had such amazing things to say. And surely there's people he didn't get along with or whatever. But he just had such amazing things to say about everyone. It was like he's really thoughtful about the compliments that he gives. And hearing him, the things that he said about Daniel Radcliffe, was like, it was altering my psyche. <laughs> Because there's no way to be a Harry Potter fan and like truly be 100% on the Harry Potter team. Um, I'm not 100% on the Harry Potter team. Okay, and I haven't been since I was a young kid. You know, when you're young, it's like all about the hero. Then you get a little bit older and you're like, I'm kind of tired of rooting for this like perfect guy who wants things to be good just because he likes them to be good. Um, and you kind of start to like relate or see the side of the villain or the whoever and i'm sure dan radcliffe is totally tired of being you know talking about harry potter being you know and that's as as is to be expected um but i can't help but feel a little bit like sad that it seems like he doesn't really like that part of his history that may be incorrect but he's run away from it you know and i can totally understand the reasons why but it gives you a certain like, oh, I guess he didn't really, like, it wasn't an amazing experience for him or something. But hearing it from Tom Felton's point of view and the way that he viewed Daniel Radcliffe was eye-opening and it was very beautiful and it was really well done. And he just has so much respect for the people that he worked with. And, you know, he and... Daniel Radcliffe were the only other of the kids who had been on sets before and just their attitude about it was so different and it just was like be beautiful <laughs> to hear him talk about Daniel Radcliffe and then when he talked about Emma Watson was amazing as well and of course there's other actors who like made a bit in big impact on him I was like dying laughing when he was talking about working with Ray Fiennes <laughs> it really tracks <laughs> about like what a weird acting experience it was with Ray Fine. Um, I just really liked it. Sometimes memoirs, like I feel like they kind of just like are like a, the storyline is like this, like it just is zero interest or zero anything. But this had a really great flow to it. As I said, it was kind of went full circle. The ending was really hard hitting and really beautiful. And it was really great to hear about like somebody who has seemingly, you know, like has a great life and is very grateful for it and is like in a really good place after having a hard time. And I just really was appreciating everything that I was reading. It was an extremely fast read. I loved hearing Tom Felton's voice for six hours. It was amazing, um, but it was super fast. I weeded the front yard. I weeded the, the backyard, made dinner, and then like wrapped pr some presents and made some presents and the book was done. It was really, really fun. I recommend it pretty much to everyone. You know, there's not very many actors or anyone who I'm really like that interested in. Always been a really big Tom Felton fan really was a borrower's stand back in my day um you know when I was like five years old but it's hard for me to kind of cross the line of like I don't want to know celebrities very well like I like Draco Malfoy and I I've always thought Tom Felton has been like a good guy but I don't want to know him well I don't want to know anybody well I'm afraid that I, the things I'll learn I won't like you know, so I, I was even kind of surprised that I picked this up. I, I just like it just happened to be available. And I was like, oh, I've never heard of this. That's kind of cool. I wonder if he wrote it. And I was like, oh, I wonder if he reads it. And then he didn't. And I listened to it and it was great. Um, but 
when I was going on Amazon, because when you, when you send it to your, because I got the book book too, and I, I sent it to my Kindle. When you go on to send it to your Kindle, it gives you all of these options of other books that are similar to that. And it was a bunch of other celebrities' memoirs. And I was like, I have zero interest in any of these. I do not want to read Alan Rickman, one of my favorite actors of all time. I don't want to read what he has to say. I'm terrified that it will change my viewpoint of him in a, in a negative way <laughs> or just even change it, period, because I like the way that it is in my brain right now. So, you know, I love actors for what they are, meaning I love them in the movies that they act in, and I love the way that they act. I don't need to love their personal life or anything. Um, so I liked hearing Tom Felton's story as like a kind of smaller celebrity. And I liked hearing his perspective of all of the great huge actors that he worked with. Just hearing like snippets of them. Yeah, the stuff he said about Alan Rickman was very funny and, and was great. Stuff he said about Michael Gambon was very funny and great. Um, and it was just... A, it was an overall very fun reading experience. But I don't think that I will be reading more memoirs and autobiographies and stuff going forward um but I would recommend this to everybody I simply thought it was so much fun <laughs> and I would recommend the audiobook specifically like I said I almost always just listen to books I, I I don't read books very often so that's what I have to say about that I what if you've read it what did you think um have you read other autobiographies that you really really liked that are a similar kind of vein I'd be interested to hear about those I don't know many people who read autobiographies at all um, or memoirs I know it's not very cool to like hold a candle for a real life people like not a fictional not fictional characters but like real life people but it but there's one case where I can't help but do it and I think you'll know who it is and the fact is I don't talk about it very often I don't like sing it from the top of the hills I don't have a you know Instagram account that's making creepy posts about them together I don't any of that but the fact is I hold a candle for them okay and that's that and this book did not did not stamp that candle out okay and I'm gonna leave it at that if you know you know okay bye